Yeah, so this actually, this song came about in a very funny way. We got the opportunity last semester to, or last year, to work with um, a producer named Tommy Prophet and Dr. Blasco, who we have lessons with, um, my professor, came to me and was like, hey, you should prepare a piece to play for um, uh, Tommy so he could hear what you have to say, maybe give some feedback on it. And I was listening through some of the stuff that I had made already and I just wasn't happy with it. So in a matter of 48 hours, I was like, I'm going to write something new and it's gonna be better than everything else I've made. Um, and what came out was what I thought was an original composition via the first 24 hours, and then quickly realized that I accidentally remade Danny Elfman's uh, 1989 Batman theme. So I decided to just go all in on it, and I um, wrote it with that in mind of this is now just a recreation of this, and it worked out, I think, uh, fairly well for having such a quick turnaround. But um, it was a lot of fun to make, um, and it's, it's big and loud, which I love doing. There was a, a very interesting challenge in uh, finding out what we were gonna do with tracks and what we were gonna do with live orchestra as it is in its nature, just a very like hybrid piece of music. Um, and so originally writing it, there was a lot of stuff that was more synthetic or stuff that I wrote with digital instruments that I was able to push beyond what is usually comfortable uh, for them to play. So it was finding that middle ground of trying to keep that same sound while also trying to make it playable uh, for those people. Um, so we were figuring out that situation. Dr. Blasco was a huge help in making that happen uh, and come to life. He did most of the sheet music stuff. Um, I'm still very new to it. So that, I'm very thankful for that because this could have turned out much differently, I think. Yeah, it, it was a fun challenge and something that I know that I will have to learn for the future and figuring out how to write in players' ranges and make it all work. So that way, when they sit down and have to play it, um, they're not pulling their hair out, frustrated with the parts that we've written. So my experience working with Arco was actually really interesting because I think my favorite part of the different projects I've gotten to do is seeing how many different people from different backgrounds come together to make something really awesome. Like I got to see what the animators were doing. I got to like dive really deep into the music and the sound and just 
having all of these different parts come together, I think was really integral to that project. Some of the challenges working on Arco, I think with any animation thing, there's usually lots of things happening pretty quickly. So you have to time the music to everything that's happening, like really specifically. So like if a character does something on screen, you have to follow that with the music. So you have to be very clear and intentional with how you write for that. Some of the challenges with Arco, with taking that written for a film and making it for live orchestra is just thinking that every part in every player is going to be a real musician. So you have to think like through all sorts of details, like is this part easy to read? Is it feasible? Does it work on the real instrument? For Arco, I had to write for harmonica and mandolin and guitar and all sorts of instruments that aren't really in a normal orchestra. So there were lots of fun challenges I had to figure out with that. But I think the end result is something that's really special. Well, for me, this was my first time working uh, with scoring film in general, um, especially with animated film. This was a huge challenge. Uh, mainly started with me and a group of two other guys coming up with an idea and saying, hey, let's make a film. And for the most part, we didn't organize everything to a T. 
So it was really just having a lot of back and forth with um, bringing parts together, changing things over and over. I think we had about three final drafts by the time it was over. Um, but that was just the cool part of getting to uh, see how hand in hand the actions and interactions with the animators is with the composer from square A to the final product. There's just a lot of changes and a lot of movement happening. One of the biggest challenges for me was learning how to let go of an idea in order to bring something else in that would support the film a bit more. Especially with a lot of the changes we had to make, there were a lot of ideas that had to just be let go of in lieu of just making the film more cohesive, making sure that the points that needed to be highlighted were properly highlighted. Um, the way that uh, me and the producers were describing it was, the whole thing can't be in yellow highlighter. So just finding the parts that really mean something and trying to make those just blare out and then drop everything back for when people are talking or when something low-key is happening. One of the cool challenges of this process was translating what was originally just you know, a digital film source into something that was meant to be played live by an orchestra. And uh, that is something that's super challenging for me. I've never had to do that before. And originally this film was not intended for um, you know, live performance. A lot of it is electronic backing tracks. Um, and for me, it was just a big challenge learning how to recognize how all the strengths of the instruments worked, trying to you know, just figure that out to bring it onto paper. And of course, I had so much help from uh, different resources like Vincent and from Blasco, helping me to bridge that gap in my knowledge. And it was an amazing learning experience overall. So we are the composers that worked on DICE, and it was a lot of fun, as this was both of our first times uh, learning how to work with another composer um, and collaborate on a single piece. Um, so that was a huge challenge in just learning how to communicate and find that middle ground on two different completely styles of music and bringing those together. For me, I still remember when the two of us met for the first time and we were showing some of the rough ideas that we had one of the first things that he brought in was the song that you'll hear at the very end credits. It was the beginnings of that, while I brought in the main trumpet motif idea that you'll hear towards the beginning of the film. And a big challenge of that was transitioning between those two ideas because they're so different. But I feel like we, at the end product, we did a pretty good job getting it all together. One of the biggest challenges in writing the music, I feel like, was that finding the 
the middle ground on what idea should we land on. Um, as we, <laughs> there were many different drafts of music that we came up with before we landed on the trumpet, um, which you'll hear throughout it um, in the guitar. That was, mm -hmm. I, I think you brought that in, but that was, that was really interesting because it's not my style of writing at all. So it was just very um, interesting trying to write for instruments that we were not super familiar with um, and finding a way to blend it in with the orchestra as a whole um, and finding those melodic lines to go throughout it. So the biggest challenge was that when we originally were writing the music, it was made in a DAW, digital audio workstation, and we weren't originally writing it for live players. Um, but once the film got nominated for the Five Minute Film Festival last year, uh, we had to figure out pretty quickly just how it was all going to work because it wasn't conventionally written to a set time signature or tempo the entire time. It was pretty atemporal the whole time. So what that looked like for us was a lot of sitting through and adjusting all the individual parts so that everything could fit on one set time and tempo. And then following that, we then had to do all the copyist work, putting it on sheet music and getting it all ready for the players. Frankie never misses a confession. Mm. What happened to you? It's called money stolen under your watch. Well, how much money we talk? Skim it off the top or flee the country? No idea. You're lucky for it, you like you so much. Yeah. You came all this way to give me a cake box? Frankie always forgets to bring something to the sit down, so I'd like the cassata cake, you know? Just smooth things over. See, that's where you got it wrong. Frankie didn't steal nothing. They'll decide that tonight. Told me to drive 10 and 2. You know, with these airbags, 9 and 3 is the way to go. Still prefer one hand, though. Long night? Sorry, kid, got a lot on my mind. Especially having a bail cruise out. His fault, the money's stolen. I mean, he keeps the books. Well, uh, Cruz thinks that you might have done it. Listen, Miss Frankie, I could care less if you gamble all your money away and have debt. That's your business. But you can trust me. I will lie up and down for you. I didn't steal the money. I know I can trust you, Dice. And if you stole the money, I'd lie for you too. You know I never wanted to join the family. I always dreamt of becoming a nun. <laughs> Sister Frankie. I, I could see that. Imagine the peace. Contemplation. Having a purpose in life. Here. Something I've been looking into. What's this? It's by the beach, hidden away. That's true peace. They say you're never too old or too young. You're leaving. Ever since I was 12, I've been doing jobs for these guys. My first was a delivery. 
My mentor said, don't open it until you're with them. <laughs> well, instead of opening that cake box, I dropped it off and ran away. Not a minute later. Ooh. Frankie! 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 My experience working on this film was really fun because it sort of, the guy, a lot of the characters themselves sort of wrote the music for me based off of their personality. Because they were sort of theatrical. One was very theatrical, one was very sort of mysterious. And they sort of had this theme that already went with them automatically that I could hear that sort of works together. And so it almost kind of wrote itself as the film went along. So it was really fun. Uh, so writing the music for the film specifically, was interesting because I had sort of chose like the, the old style mystery sort of ensemble sound and I had never written with that before. And it's a lot of the same instruments just played in a different way. And so I sort of had to step out of my comfort zone and investigate a few other sorts of soundtracks and stuff to figure out that, that way of part writing and melody writing. And so yeah, it was different and it was fun. Translating the film into live orchestra had some challenges. And also because I'm part producer, there are some things that just wouldn't work necessarily between the two. So there's a challenge of making the parts work and sound good in the room. And then also what to use as tracks and how those interact with each other, particularly that speeding up clock sound. That was sort of difficult to make the timing work with live people and not have it quantized to this gradually increasing track. So I think just taking the abstract imaginative things that I initially had and sort of trying to make them more realistic was a big challenge. Um, that was the main one. House getting repoed? I was gonna start charging you for consulting, but uh, I can afford my fee now. Shh! Can you hear the ocean? Feel the Florida sunshine, the palm trees sway. I picture him right here, living alone in an old trailer, feeling the grass between his toes and playing the game he loves. And his peace is interrupted by the irritating detector. <laughs> Sounds nice if we were in Florida. So what's the problem this time? There is... the veil in front of my eyes. The type that kept the Gentiles out of the Holy of Holies, but I need into the Holy of Holies. Yeah, I'm not following. It's the Rebundus Mall that troubles me. 
The plot twist. I see the chessboard. What does the detective need to do? <sighs> he needs to outwit the madman by beating him in chess. Or the bomb goes off. It causes a landslide, destroying the surrounding houses. What if I had a bomb? Right now, what would you do? Finally show you the inside of a jail cell. My life isn't a joke. And neither is yours. But that's what makes the readers look like. I ride the fine line between genius and insanity, brilliance and the deranged. A few steps from the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> ah, Chekhov's gun. Per the rules, you understand. It needs to go off back three. Nobody's getting hurt if you disarm the bomb. I have gone too far too long without a solution. Attention, detective. You are the hero of the story. You're supposed to be winning. The readers expect for the detective to win. The readers are always expecting an unexpected plot twist. Then the unexpected loses its surprise. <laughs> 